I'm trying to make joy. I'm trying to make happiness, and that I don't consider superficial. That I consider extremely necessary. At a time when the crossover between fashion and celebrity is ever more apparent, one name has emerged to become popular culture's go-to designer. This farm boy from Missouri has taken the all-American dream of cartoons, fast food and Barbie dolls, breathing fresh life into a storied Italian brand in the process. With the industry undergoing its biggest shake-up in decades, we have exclusive access to Moschino's first ever show at Made LA, Los Angeles' burgeoning fashion week. Join us as we meet the man beneath the crown and discover more about a bona fide ID icon, Jeremy Scott. I don't know that I thought I'm going to go in and just start my own thing and do my own thing. I just kind of wanted to be a part of fashion. I want to be a part of this thing that I love and I've dreamt about. So for me, it was more about that. School wasn't the most um, exciting place. I mean, I tried to use you know the hallways as my runway. Yeah, I guess maybe I try harder because I, I came from a small town. I didn't actually think I was going to be a fashion designer. I would draw clothes though, and one of my art teachers saw it and she was like, "You should really go to fashion school." But I actually got a rejection letter from my portfolio that said I lacked originality, creativity, and artistic ability. Jeremy revealed to us that he was initially rejected by design schools in New York. So what was it that turned this apparently unoriginal young designer into one of the most popular names in fashion? We've been invited to Jeremy's fitting session ahead of his show to see the man at work. Okay. It looks good on you. Thank you very much. Yeah? Exactly. Instant it's like a, yeah, joy. Exactly. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Well, I'll have this one then. <laughs> so here's the, the hat umbrella, and then this one's all embroidered with all the hand embroidery and the mirrors and the crystals yes. and the, like, the shisha playing with that idea of, um, you know, handcrafts and logomania and mm. even sometimes how that's so prevalent in third world countries where they kind of even do fakes of it. I just love all of that yeah. kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a sparkly one as well. And the, the black lace mantilla one. It's more of an evening umbrella, I think. Exactly. Yes. But I know from the people that I meet and you know the messages I get on social media and mm. how, how my work can affect someone's life. Mm. And that's profound to me. Mm. You know, a pair of winged shoes or you know, some T-shirt or a phone case, even some, even some small something mm. maybe made someone happy. And maybe they fell in love. You know, maybe I'm part of someone's life story and I want that moment to be so special, mm -hmm. so beautiful, mm -hmm. so perfect. Yeah, pretty much uh, the, the clothes are set. Now we're trying to plug people in, but you also have to think about the math of like, if she's here, yeah. where else can she go time-wise and not <clears throat> also cause a gap where it's just like here, there, here, yes. there. Also sometimes it's like how they respond to it. Like if they've connected to the garment, I feel like there is a magic that happens. Not disheartened by that initial rejection letter, Jeremy decided to give fashion another shot, and a stint at the Pratt Institute in New York gave him the tools he needed to develop his individual style and further his blossoming career. Coming from a place where I was kind of ridiculed or made fun of for the way I looked, yeah, it was great to walk down the street in New York and people would be like, oh, I love, I love what you're wearing, you, know, like, you look amazing, or I had like long hair and it was in braids, like I love your braids, or you know. I moved to Paris to try to get an internship with Jean-Paul Gaultier. And did you manage it? No. <laughs> Jean-Paul later said he couldn't hire me because I was just too good and too strong and that he knew that I had too much talent I needed to be on my own, which I think was such a, a great cop-out and I love him <laughs> for it. And he, he knows how much I love him. When you moved to LA from Paris, what was the state of fashion in Los Angeles in 2002? For most people, it was kind of nil, zilch, zero, nada. I, on the other hand, was super inspired by it. LA is slowly being recognized as a potentially major destination by the fashion industry. And Jeremy, who made the Great Leap Westward in 2002, is one of the designers responsible for the change. It's so diverse, yes. but unlike, let's say, New York, People are allowed to be a bit more authentically who they are in mm -hmm. the sense. I feel like New York pushes everybody together, 
here because people are in their cars, people are in their own little worlds. So, and disparate, yeah. so you can actually be still very eccentrically you. LA gave Jeremy the space he needed to hone his own eponymous and fiercely independent label. Dressing celebrities, collaborating with major brands, his sense of spectacle and humour eventually attracting the attention of Moschino, where he's served as creative director since 2014. And it was that, that humour attracted you to Moschino? Absolutely. I love the mix of high glamour with high humour, the way that things looked super elegant, but at the same time, bonkers. When I think about sometimes when people who are like, oh, I don't like what he's doing at Moschino, or that's not really Moschino. It's like, well, maybe you don't really know what Moschino is. Mm. And what I do now is what is Moschino. So get over it, <laughs> frankly. I mean, you can see the stuff is kind of this, like, sort of mamas and the papas, sort of floral, early 70s stuff. These kind of bell-bottom pants are amazing. The girls all carry themselves a certain way when they're wearing Jeremy's clothes because they, they're, they're fun and they're up and they've got life to them, you know, and that's what's going to be really exciting to see in sort of a, in a show setting. I run the show in my head through the yes. pictures and I try to see, is there a detail that's missing? Is there a bag, a shoe, is there a connection? Because it's like a conversation to me. It's like a, a paragraph. You know, th all these details and how you go from here all the way to there. So what can we expect from the show? The unexpected. <laughs> True to Jeremy's imagination, the set for the show is both bold and spectacular. To make all of this possible, Jeremy surrounds himself with a team that reflects his love for the seemingly incongruous worlds of low brow and high fashion. By Jeremy's side at all times is legendary stylist Carlene Surf de Dezeal. We steal her away for a quick chat before the show starts. Because you've been very busy for the last two days, staring I'm pensively. I'm obsessed by the set. It's fun. And I think fashion always have to be fun. I think it's very amusing that it's in LA this time. I like the idea. I love glamour, I love beautiful girl. And I think they said the way they are going to look tonight. When he left diapers and went into train pants, he had to have a certain brain. <laughs> you know, so it, <laughs> he had an opinion about things very early. Yeah. It really doesn't matter what you do as long as you're a good person and you're an honest person and you treat people the way they should be treated with respect, then your mother can be proud of you. I mean, this is kind of, it's, it's unprecedented that you have this, this, such a cast, you know, in LA all at one time. But it's cool the fact that they've all come just for Jeremy. The relationships, they are very important to me. And when I fall in love with someone in that way, you know, there's such a connection that I can't ever let go. There are a few people that are your true, true friends that will be there, you know, when you're in a hospital bed and will really, really will have your best interest at heart. And Jeremy's one of those people. And he's amazing. He's the coolest guy ever. Jeremy, after Vanity Fair and Diane Sawyer and everything, was really one of the first designers uh, to get a hold of me. Uh, and he actually came out to my house. Um, and we spent uh, some time together, and he was just so nice yes. and great and a great designer. And we've become good friends ever since then. When I first started in 2008 um, in the spotlight and I did an album release, he left me one of his ice cream cone dresses from the Jeremy Scott collection. Uh -huh. And I was a nobody, and I did like a little performance in it, and I've just been such a huge fan. And he's been one of my best friends for, from the beginning. What is it about your designs that suit themselves to pop stars? I guess my clothes aren't really meant for wallflowers. This is it, Miranda's just gone out. Like a football commentator. And Miranda's just gone out. You see Jeremy checking each girl before they go out. Happiness, joy, individuality, being unique, being yourself. That to me is the greatest gift I could give. I'd like to think that I was most proud of doing it on my own. 
I've been able to be authentically myself, whether it was popular or not. I was being purely who I am. What do you say to someone who's in a similar position to you, or, you know, it's maybe a small town? Follow your heart, follow your dreams. When you're speaking your truth, you're going to be happiest and you're always going to be most successful when you're happy. Thank you very much, Jeremy. Thank you. I was looking for backing and support, but I never got it. That's been a strength because I don't have people telling me what to do.